How do you know when to let a friendship go? Wedding updates and honeymoon updates. How are you feeling after your health troubles? When is your next Disney trip? Next was body confidence. As an influencer YouTuber, how do you keep from not crossing the line of hyper consumerism? Hello everyone, what is up? And welcome back to my channel. Welcome to our monthly coffee chat. I feel like I have not done a monthly coffee chat in months because I actually don't think that I have. Normally I love to do a monthly coffee chat at the end of every month just to chat about the month, hang out. Normally we do our makeup together and it's just like hanging out on FaceTime with one of your besties. But honestly, I just feel like the last few months have just been crazy and the way that the monthly coffee chats have felt, it just has made it not doable. Like I had you know, spurts of anxiety and then we came back from Disney. So the Disney series took a really long time to kind of get, not get done with, but post on YouTube and stuff. So it just feels like it's been a while. So I'm excited to just sit down and chat. I'm on my lunch break. I just made a chamomile mango tea from Bigelow. My mom had them. And let me tell you, this smells to die for. And this, the steam is coming out. It's very hot. And I've never had it before, but I didn't want a coffee because I already had a decaf coffee. And I'm going to have my lunch after this while I work and go into a meeting. So let's give this a taste because I've actually never tried it before, but I love chamomile and I love mangoes. So oh, I kind of like that. Am I the only one that's like not a tea connoisseur? Like there's all these different flavors of tea and I'm just like, it's like fancy water, but it's hot. Fancy hot water. Either way, I digress. Welcome to the monthly coffee chat where it's gonna get chatty, chaotic, and crazy as it always does. But with that being said, if you're new, subscribe. We would love to have you on our beautiful little corner of the internet. Welcome to the monthly coffee chat. I asked over on my Instagram maybe two days ago for any questions, topics, things that you guys wanted to chat about in this month's coffee chat. And you guys came through with just questions and topics. I'll put my tea down so that I can show you, but Look at all of these questions, topics, so many things to go through today. So this might be a long kind of chatty coffee chat as they are supposed to be. So welcome, buckle up. If you don't have a drink or a snack of choice, I would recommend because for my little timer here, we're already at about three minutes and I haven't even answered a single question yet because that's what we do around here. All right, the first question is, what is coming up on the channel? So what can we expect coming up in the next few months? So first things first, there's some wedding content. I'm gonna do a whole vlog on my bridal shower. I'm gonna do another like wedding episode of just getting things for the wedding, what's going on with the wedding, and just some fun other wedding content. So that's coming up on the channel this summer. Next is just some summer fun vlogs, like being outside, going to the beach, just enjoying some summer weekends, day in the lives, week in the lives. So we have a lot of weddings this summer, so I'm hoping to do just kind of some fun summer weekend vlogs and whatnot, but really just your standard kind of lifestyle stuff. We're not traveling internationally this summer or this year at all, honestly, because of the wedding, so we're not gonna be able to do much of that travel, but there's still some fun lifestyle and little New England travel to come. So that is what is coming up on the channel. So the next question was wedding updates and honeymoon updates. So in terms of wedding updates, not much as of right now. Right now we're just doing a lot of finalizing the details. For example, finalizing our menu, which we did, which we decided to do three different dishes. So I can talk about that on like a wedding episode vlog. So I'm excited for that to do. And then what else? My bridal shower is coming up here in the next like month and a half to two months. So that is kind of a big update. Update. We are getting a lot of things ready for that. I have the whole theme. You'll see all that in another vlog, but I can share the theme. It is a petals and Prosecco theme. We're going to do a brunch and I'm very excited for that. So that is coming up. Honeymoon updates none. Honestly, we're not going to do a honeymoon until February 2025 because we want to go away when it's cold. We know that we're deciding between Cabo, Hawaii, anywhere like warm and tropical. So drop your tropical locations down below. Hawaii is slowly moving its way out because it just feels really far to travel to and just like quite honestly very expensive. And it's not that it's about the money, but it's just like there's no all-inclusive resort and the way that I want a honeymoon is I just want to go somewhere and plop. I do not want to like actually plan. We've done enough planning with the wedding and planning in general that I just don't want another thing to plan. So Hawaii is slowly moving their way out and 
yeah, right now we're really leaning towards Cabo and I'm very excited about that. Next question was any summer plans? So honestly, right now for the summer plans that we do have, we are going to Martha's Vineyard for a wedding. We are going to New Hampshire for a wedding along with we are trying to get to Cape Cod for a long weekend because we absolutely love the Cape. So we are hoping to get to Cape Cod and then we do have another fun little summer plan. It's not a secret. I'll just share it later because I know that someone is going to ask about it. So I will wait until a little bit later in the video. Oh, sorry for being blurry for a second to share but that's really our summer plans and just laying low and planning our own wedding we're going to spend a lot of time at the beach in Rhode Island this summer a lot of time at the campground and just warm weather so just a really R&R &R relaxing summer other than the few little kind of weddings that we have throughout the weekend so the next question was have you been reading lately any five-star reads I have not picked up a book in probably three months when I tell you I have literally not read, however, I am excited to get back into reading because this weekend is one of my friend's bachelorettes. We are actually going to the Cliff House in Maine, and it's going to be a very chill R&R &R girls weekend. So I'll be bringing my Kindle, and I want to restart again for the third time, A Flicker in the Dark, because people have raved about that book and I know I would love it I know once I actually read it and got into it I would be obsessed with it people have given it constant five star after five star after five star and I love a thriller and it's not that I let my last book that I read was a bad book it was too late by Colleen Hoover I loved it I gave it like 4.75 stars I thought it was incredible however I think just with my anxiety that had kind of stemmed a few months ago and then going on a trip and it's just I haven't been wanting to sit down and read at night so it's just something that I want to get back into so if you have any recent five star reads drop them in the comments below because I would love to add them to another like reading haul like I have books here to read but would love to add any books to my summer reading list for the summer the next question was summer closet staples I feel like I have a few things in my closet that are just 100% summer staples I'll kind of list them off in my reasoning for why the first is one really great oversized graphic t-shirt that you can throw on with anything you can throw it on with bike shorts you can throw it on with jean shorts you can sleep in it you can throw it on over a beach cover-up I have one Urban Outfitters shirt that probably cost me $45 I bought it two or three years ago and it was a little bit pricey for a graphic tee you can get them really anywhere but one big oversized graphic t-shirt that you can kind of throw on dress up dress down is a huge summer staple for me next is one pair of really good jean shorts and one really good pair of linen shorts. I find that those are two huge summer staples in my wardrobe. The jean shorts you can dress up or down, make sure they fit you really good. You feel like you look your best in them, you feel your best in them. So I would love that for jean shorts and then the linen shorts as well because sometimes just throwing that on with, you know, a t-shirt or a plain tank top, you can dress it up, dress it down and it's very comfortable, flowy, especially for the summer. And then the next thing I would say is a black and white t-shirt and a black and white tank top they are the summer basics and summer staples to any wardrobe for me I can accessorize them really easily and I feel like they are just like the perfect thing to have in the summer and then my last summer kind of closet staple is an oversized linen shirt one that has a little bit of color and one that is solid so I just recently bought a linen green and white stripe kind of oversized button down from Old Navy use it as a beach cover-up use it as a cover-up over a cute outfit wear it with a matching set wear it with jeans jeans shorts very versatile pieces I would say those are my summer staple must-haves in my closet because I work from home so I like to be comfortable but when I go out I don't have a lot of going out stuff so I try to have things that are really versatile and I would say those are my summer closet staples because you can dress them up dress them down and you also want to feel and look your best so those would definitely be my summer closet staples for sure how are you just how are you doing how are things and I am doing so incredibly well. Honestly, I feel like I'm in a much better mental headspace now that I have been wearing my heart monitor. For those that don't know, that I kind of updated in the last vlog, I have been wearing a heart monitor for the last week and a half. And honestly, just the idea of having the heart monitor on and knowing that I'm gonna maybe get answers, whether the answer is, I have something you know irregular about my heart or there's nothing wrong with my heart either way I'm just so excited to actually have some answers finally so that has been making me feel really good and I am just a better person when I am in the warm weather and in the Sun I just feel so happy go lucky and just in the best mood mentally when the Sun is out and it is warm so I am feeling so much better thank you for asking and I'm just a better human in the summer I love the warm weather I love the summer it is when I am truly at just peak Brianna is when I'm in 
the warmth and it is the summer. So the next question kind of goes into that one also. Sorry if the lighting kind of changed. It was dark and now it's light again. So it is what it is. But next question was, how are you feeling after your health troubles and busy few months? Like I said, I'm feeling better. I would say I've probably had a few little kind of heart spouts where my heart has had some higher palpitations, but for the most part, I would say I am doing so much better. And it's funny because people kept telling you, me, you know, it's, it's gonna be better, it's gonna get better, and like you just don't feel like it's ever going to get better. You feel like you are just constantly going to be struggling and in a rut and just not feeling good. And honestly, after the last kind of few busy months, it's felt good. The last kind of two weeks that we have been home from Disney and just our travels to really not make too many plans during the week and just lay low at home. So I am feeling much better and I feel very rejuvenated. The month of June is going to be literal chaos. I have a bachelorette this weekend, a bridal shower for a friend next weekend, a wedding after that, and then Corey is gone for two weekends and it's just a crazy busy June and beginning of July. But it'll be great because during the week we're gonna lay low and I am feeling much better so thank you for asking. So the next question is how did your recent Disney trip go and why didn't you vlog? How was it not vlogging and living in the moment? So our last Disney trip was absolutely amazing. We went on a front trip with Carter and Matt and it was by far one of my favorite Disney trips we've ever done. It was so fun to just be with friends and we chose not to vlog because we've never been to Disney and not vlogged and I wanted to actually just experience Disney without the pressure of pulling out a camera, pulling out a phone, and just feeling like I had to create content. I wanted to just kind of do it at my own leisurely accord, and that's why we chose not to vlog. We just kind of wanted a trip where we didn't feel like we had to, honestly, and because it was a friend trip, not a trip just for me and Corey, it felt like the perfect opportunity to actually put the camera away. I missed vlogging, don't get me wrong, I really did. However, there will be times where maybe Corey and I don't vlog our travel day or maybe one of the days in the middle or whatever that might be because it was nice to not vlog, but I did miss it at the same time. So the next question and the question that we get all the time, which normally I like to save it for the end, but I'll say it now, which is when is your next Disney trip? And we decided that we are going to go on a Disney trip in literally 50 days. Literally in July, we are going back to Disney World and we are so excited. I know you're probably like, Brianna, you literally said you were not going to Disney much this year. Like how in the world are you going back to Disney? So we are going back to Disney with Corey's sister. So my sister-in-law and her boyfriend. It was really a spur of the moment thing. We got a really good hotel deal. We have our annual passes. The flights were really dirt cheap, like $180 round trip per person to go direct and we just said, you know what, let's go. So we are going the last weekend in July from Thursday to Tuesday. I am just elated. We've never really been, Corey's never been during the hot seasons. I went last year in August and I said I would never go again and I would never go in August, but I think we might be able to kind of just make it work on the cusp of July. I'm kind of using that as like my excuse because we are going and it is gonna be hot, but we're gonna spend a lot of time at the pool and air conditioning and we are going for an H2O glow night. That is why I wanted to go. We have never been for an H2O glow night. So I said, you know what? We've got the annual pass. We have never been in the summer and we got a good hotel deal to go with family. So let's go. And we all decided to go. Will I be vlogging? I know I'm gonna get that question. Yes, I am gonna vlog that trip because I would love to look back on it with my sister-in-law and her boyfriend. So we are very excited and we are heading back to Disney in July. Very kind of spur of the moment trip, but with that, I am so excited and it is going to be the best time. So the next question was, did you and Corey ever have to do long distance any tips? So when Corey and I first started dating, we were long distance, but not really, if that makes sense. So I was going to school in Massachusetts and Corey was living in Rhode Island at the time. And because he was working on the weekends, we really didn't get to see each other too much in the beginning of our relationship. So really in the beginning of our relationship for the first six to eight, ish months like we kind of were a long distance honestly and we really would only see each other every two to three weeks for you know 24 to 48 hours at a clip and it was definitely challenging i think because we didn't know any different in the beginning it was really just the only thing that we knew i would say one of the biggest tips that i have is communication is a huge one we would call each other at least 
twice a day and I know that that sounds crazy but I just wanted to talk to him all the time so whether that was over the phone or FaceTime I think texting is one thing but being able to actually hear the person's voice or see the person's face is different so where we were texting you know 24 7 as well just about kind of stupid you know little things that were going on throughout the day I believe that one of the main contributors that made it not feel like long distance was because we were hearing each other's voice or FaceTiming you know it if it was a Friday night and some people were you know going out or I wasn't going out or I was going out later we would you know chat for an hour or we would talk about our days or what we were having for dinner or you know just in general hearing each other's voice I feel like the conversation is longer it's more fluid and it feels more kind of off the cuff versus like texting and you know just typing words you know for example right now when I'm vlogging it's one thing after the next if you and I were you know texting back and forth it would take us triple quadruple the amount of time to have a conversation and it was just nice to actually be able to you know FaceTime or call throughout the day so that would be my biggest tip is just communication thoughtful communication right FaceTime being on the phone so that is kind of how we did it when we did long distance next question was how to stay positive in life um, I don't know because sometimes I am a pessimist. I am a glass half empty kind of girl. Sometimes I get really aggravated really quickly. It's, it is my worst quality. I sometimes see the glass half empty all the time for little things. I get aggravated really quickly and I find that when I don't have control over my own situations, I get really frustrated at times. So I think it's hard, honestly, to stay positive in life. One thing that I have really tried to lean into, though, especially with my anxiety and just how busy we've been is, is this something that is going to matter when I wake up tomorrow? Is this something that is life altering? And I think because, and we're going to go down like a really crazy path here, but um, I have lost a lot of people in my life. I have grieved so many loved ones in my life I did the math the other day and I have lost I am 27 years old I have lost if I did the math I have lost someone either close to me or bloodline or f close family friend every other year of my life in the 27 years of life I've lost anywhere from 10 to 15 loved ones and it's been really challenging and I think it's made me a really strong individual but the way that I look at life and try to stay so positive is you only have one life and life can be taken from you in the blink of an eye and just absolutely have the rug pulled out from underneath you. So I try to really romanticize the little things and remember that every day is a gift. And because I've been through so much grief, I think that's why I have that mentality. And I'm no perfect person. I, I just said I am very pessimistic and I can view the glass very half empty at times. But I try to remember that our life is very short-lived. You're on this path for a reason. Everything in life happens for a reason and the good, the bad, the ugly, I try to stay as positive as I can through it all because you really do only have one life to live and it could be taken away from you at any moment. So romanticize the little things, you know, do those little things that bring you joy. You know, if you're breathing and you're walking, you're lucky and you're fortunate and you have to remember that because I have had so many loved ones in my life get taken either in the blink of an eye or, you know, be diagnosed with cancer, or fall and break a rib and not be able to come back from it. Just all these, you know, crazy things where your loved ones are taken from you and I stay positive because at the end of the day, we only have one life to live and when my last breath comes I want to say that I lived a very fruitful and positive and joyous life so with that that is how I would say that's how I try to live a positive life but at the same time I'm not always positive so you can't always be perfect every time the next question is do you have unlimited PTO with your job and tips for managing vacations when you are full-time so I do not have unlimited PTO for my work I get four weeks paid vacation every year Corey does have unlimited PTO with his work however we follow my PTO so that he's never taking advantage of it or going overboard with days off that he is taking I do not have unlimited PTO however tips for managing I would say I am really particular about the days that I do take for vacation I try to make them very thoughtful days I'm also very fortunate because I work from home so for example if we are leaving on a Thursday at five o'clock I can work from the airport before we leave versus having to take a half day so again don't ever abuse your you know work time I don't think it's responsible I don't think it's productive I think it's 
not very good to do that with your employers. However, what I will say is tips for managing. Corey and I normally sit down anywhere between like January and February and we plan out our first kind of six months of vacation. Vacation days that we need to take. Where is that going to leave us for my allotment? What kind of vacations are we trying to plan? Does that mean that we can't take time off during X, Y, and Z time? And we really do about every three to six month check-in of when are we going on vacation? What months are those? How will that line up for work? Is it a busy season? Is it a not busy season? You know, is that during a time where it's the end of the month for Corey and it's a sales month and he doesn't want to leave at the end of the month? He'd prefer to leave maybe in the middle, the beginning of the month. So we always kind of talk about that, but I would say tips for managing your vacation is make sure that you're not really, I guess, taking it all at once. Honestly, I try to really take my vacation sporadically. Tips for managing your vacation when you're working full time, I would say just have a conversation with your partner or even just yourself to make sure that you're, you know, using your time wisely and taking it. But I would say everyone kind of has their own way that they like to plan their vacation time. So I recommend just kind of looking in with yourself and feeling like you're taking the time that you need when you need. I love the next question, which is as an influencer YouTuber, how do you keep from not crossing the line of hyper consumerism? This is something that sometimes I actually feel that I struggle with because I am a spender. I am a big spender. I love to spend money. I am the spender in Corey and I's partnership. And more recently, I've been trying not to do that. And one way that I try to fall not into the hyper consumerism like lane is I try to differentiate if it is a want or if it is a need. And there's nothing wrong with having wants. Like I, let me tell you, I buy when I want. This weekend when Old Navy was having a Memorial Day sale, I did spend $270, okay? I spent $270 on a lot of great summer clothes and summer staples because a lot of my stuff last year didn't fit, didn't love it, had holes, wasn't my style anymore. So I donate those or I bring them to Play-Doh's Closet to try to make a little bit of money back. But the way that I try to stay off the hyper kind of consumerism train is I really decipher if it's a need or a want and I try to limit my wants throughout the month to, you know, five, 10. You can buy 10 wants this month, whether that's a $7, you know, hand sanitizer or a $50 t-shirt. You can only buy a few wants of the month. And I also feel like right now we're saving for a wedding. We have a lot of upcoming trips that we're going on. So I feel like I don't hyper consume and I try to stay away from it because I also feel like sometimes those are just like the little hits of serotonin. And I try to find other things that will bring, bring me joy versus extreme, you know, hyper consumerism. The other thing is I'm a little, I'm a little YouTuber girly. Okay. I've never been like gifted or I don't get sent gifted PR or any PR. I've never been sent it once really. So the only thing that I've ever kind of gotten from any brand was I worked with Merit and they've sent me their products. But other than that, I don't really get sent anything. I've never worked with other companies. I think if I did, maybe it would feel like I have more consumerism because it would be more coming to the door, but I really just try to have a fine line of what I'm bringing into the home versus what I'm not. And, you know, you have to ask yourself, is it a want or a need? And when you get it in the mail, you know, try it on, wear it, use the item, whatever it is. And if you feel like it's not good for you, return it and just get rid of it. And I don't know if that answered your question, but I do have a really bad kind of spender mindset. But again, I try to really decipher between a want and if it's a want or a need. Next was body confidence. Love your content. And thank you. I'm so glad that you're here. Love you too. And body confidence. This one I feel like is tricky. Honestly, I have struggled probably for the last year and a half to two years where I have definitely gained weight. And honestly, as I should be. You're never gonna stay the same size your entire life. It is not the way that life rolls. It is not the way that the cookie crumbles. And the way that I like to live my life when it comes to body positivity and just body confidence in general is every single body is beautiful. It helps you breathe, It you walk, you can see, you can hear. Like your body is the most beautiful thing on the face of this, this earth because it is quite literally like the orifice that you live in every day it's you it is exactly who you are and you were made the way that you were made because that's how you were supposed to be at least that's what i believe and i'm also somebody when it comes to something a little bit more concrete what i tell myself is my clothes are not meant to fit me like or no sorry i always see i always mess it up i am meant like I am meant to wear my clothes. My clothes are not meant to wear me. So if something doesn't fit, it's gone. I just got rid of like seven pairs of jean shorts because I gained weight in my stomach and because I have stomach problems, my stomach's always bloated. And I'm also on my period right now. So you should see I look like I have like six months pregnant because my stomach is bloated because I have stomach problems and my period is here and I'm bloated. And you know what? 
that's cool. It's fine. Our bodies are bodies. They fluctuate. Every body is beautiful. And, you know, I think that's just, it's hard. Body confidence is hard. Everybody wants to look a certain way. You want to feel a certain way. You want to feel beautiful and confident and, you know, loving yourself and having self-love. And I just remember at the end of the day that I am who I am and I was made this way for a reason and I love my body. My body gives me everything that I need and you just have to remember that. And I you know that's harder said than done, but it's just kind of the way that I believe that we should all be, you know, talking about our bodies. But next is, what do you do for work? I am a sales trainer at an international travel company. I love what I do for work. I really, I will never share the company that I work for. I will never go too in depth in my job for safety reasons and privacy reasons because I do decide to put my life online, but I will never put my employer or too much of what I do online for work because I just like to keep that a little bit more personal and private. Next question is, how do you get the confidence to vlog in public? I love this question. I literally, I'm like smiling because I love it so much. I think that vlogging in public is so normal. Sometimes I get a little nervous when I like have to prop the camera up and like someone's watching me do it, like when they're walking by me if I'm in a home goods or something. But the way that I view it is, think about it. You sit on your phone all the time, consuming content, watching vlogs, watching reels, watching TikToks. Even my, you know, mother at 62 or almost 62 years old is doing that. Everyone in life absorbs content. So if we can absorb it, like why can't we vlog it and put it out there? Someone had to post that video standing in the mall lobby, like doing a dance or doing a video. So like, why can't I? So I always remember that and that's kind of how I have the confidence to vlog in public is because, you know, I'm documenting my life and I kind of chose to do it. And at first it was a little awkward, I won't lie. I wasn't super confident in the beginning, but now I'm like, whatever, like why not vlog? Everyone else you know, absorbs content, so why can't I go out and create it? I'm looking for a few more questions because I feel like this coffee chat is getting pretty long. Okay, great question. When will the podcast be back? You're my favorite podcast ever. Thank you so much. We, honestly, the podcast has just really been on the back burner. I'm hoping to get back into the podcast next week or the week after that first week of June. We have just had so much going on that the idea of even finding the hour and a half to record the podcast and then me to spend the next 20 minutes exporting and getting the stuff organized for it has just been not on the list. So the podcast will be coming back. We're hoping to get the podcast back up the month of June. However, we are 100% going to go to an every other week schedule. We have too much going on to do every week. And especially with us working full time, weddings, our wedding, just things in general this summer, every other week will be much more doable. So the podcast will be back, but it's going to be on an every other week cadence. Thoughts on the Disney adult stereotype? Honestly, I don't know. I don't really, my thoughts on the Disney adult stereotype is like, who gives a flying frig? Like, I just think people care way too much about what other people like or just about what other people think. It's kind of a double-edged sword, honestly. I am someone who, we love going to Disney. We don't necessarily have Disney all over our home. That's something I would never do. But, you know, people always ask like, why do you always go back to Disney? Like, why do you always choose to go there? And it's like, why do you always choose to go to the Bahamas and sit at a resort and like stare at the sand? Like, uh, you know what I mean? It's just everyone wants to have an opinion about people that love Disney or going to Disney or having a Disney podcast or that's for little kids. And to me, honestly, I just, I let people have their own opinions and I just don't let them phase me because at the end of the day, there's probably things that they do that I don't agree with. I just don't share it because it's like, why do I care? I think that's the other thing about the Disney adult stereotype, my thoughts on it. like. Why do you care if somebody, you know, calls you a Disney adult? Or like, why do you care if someone, you know, says X, Y, and Z thing about you constantly going to Disney? Like, it's your life, live it to the fullest. That's what you love, that's what you like. I don't, you know, say anything about people who have X, Y, and Z other hobbies that I have my own opinions on, but they're my own opinions, right? They're not fact. So I try not to let that kind of like get to my head too much because I feel like a lot of people just always have something to say, but. I like to just not let it get to me. And then the last question, which I love, I've actually talked about this in a different light before when I talked about my, you know, like friendships in your 20s and, and that was a big, you know, crying moment for me, which I talked about in another coffee chat. But the next question is, loaded question, but how do you know when to let a friendship go? Honestly, this is a really, it is a loaded question and I do have an answer for it, honestly. And I think it's just when, that friendship 
runs its course and you're both growing in different directions, right? It doesn't always have to be this really large fallout. It doesn't mean that someone did something wrong. It doesn't mean that you both, you know, don't like each other. It doesn't mean that you, you know, had a horrible fight and that's why you're not friends anymore. I think, you know, when you let a friendship go is when you let a, another relationship grow. Or for me, the way that I have kind of let friendships go in in a way is they just kind of you outgrow people and and I don't think that's a bad thing like I think there's this negative connotation about you know losing friends or not being friends with someone anymore and there's always this stigma that there was a falling out or that there was a big argument or that they just like don't like each other or got into a fight and sometimes your path just takes you down different roads and I believe that everyone is in your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime and it is okay to have different friends at different points in your life. You know, I have friends that I went to school, or the not friends, but I have people that I went to, you know, middle school with that I have beautiful memories with that I haven't spoken to in 15 years. Like, you know, we're not friends anymore. I have, you know, people that I went to college with that I'm no longer friends with anymore, but I have beautiful memories with them and it's okay. We, we grow in different directions and that's not a bad thing. I think that so many times over and over again people think, you know, well I have to stay friends with them because of X, Y, and Z reason or, you know, well I, I don't know if I should continue this friendship and, you know, let their friendship take its natural course of direction, right? I have gained and let go of so many friends throughout my life and that is okay, that is a, a part of life. You know, your parents, my, my mom used to tell me all the time, you know, you're gonna, never gonna have, you know, 25 friends for your whole life. And I used to say, yeah, okay, you just don't, but that I'm never gonna be that person. But it is so true. Like, you just don't have friends in your life from, you know, forever. It's just, you grow into different paths, you, you like different things. Sometimes you have friends because they're, close in proximity and you just grew up with them all your life. You have, you know, friends in college because they were your, you know, neighbor in college or you picked them or they were on your same sports team and your friends. But if you're still friends with them, that's amazing, that's beautiful. But I kind of let friendships go when I feel that they have lived their fullest life and that they are ready to kind of move on and grow in a different direction. And I think that's okay. I think it's never talked about enough online that you can grow out of friendships normally and let them fizzle in their own way. They don't have to just, you know, you don't have to be friends just because you, you know, went to high school together or you went to college together or you had this big monumental moment together. You can still have those memories. The memories don't go away, right? You don't just lose all of your memories with those person or with those people. It just means that they are living their own best life and you just grew apart and that's okay like it is okay to let a friendship kind of fizzle and move in its own direction because that was the course that that friendship was you know supposed to be in so with that being said that is going to end this month's coffee chat we're kind of like ending it right away but i feel like i have been chatting for a while i need to go and heat up my lunch to go sit down at my next meeting for work this was a beautiful coffee chat and i really missed you guys i was chatting away there were so many questions even kind of in the coffee chat that i just couldn't get to because i would have been here for hours chatting with you guys but keep asking your questions every coffee chat make sure to follow me on instagram and with that being said i love you guys so much thanks for being here cheers to a beautiful coffee chat and i will see you in the next one